1 Corinthians chapter 8, 13. Before we do, for those that have questions at Bible Today Baptist Church or 856-261-9018, give us a call or comment. Glad to hear from you. 1 Corinthians. All right, let's, uh, let's read 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 13. Just one verse to start with, then we'll go to chapter 9. Beginning of verse 13. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. What is he talking about? What meat is he talking about here? What meat is he talking about here? In chapter 8. It was to idols. To idols. sacrificed to idols. That's right. And so as far as... No, in chapter 8. Chapter... No. Well, I, I just thought it here. Maybe we did. Uh, well, maybe we have. Maybe I got the wrong, wrong section. I thought it was that. Where do, where do you think we should start? Was it verse 13? Did we stop at 12? Okay, that must be a mistake. Instead of 8.13, it should be 9.13. That's, that's why I made a mistake. Well, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians, thank you, 9. Let's read 13, 14, and 15, starting with 13. Do you not know that they which minister upon holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers of the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel, but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be death so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. All right, verse 13. They which minister. What does that mean to minister? What's the meaning of that word? Uh, assist. Assist. To serve. All right, assist. Assist. To serve. Doesn't necessarily mean, uh, not necessarily preachers, but anything. Minister. But in this case, about the holy things. Uh, what holy things are they talking about here? <coughs> it's the Old Testament, isn't it? Old Testament. Who did minister in the Old Testament? The priests. The Levites and the priests. Right? The Levites and the priests. Who were the top dogs? Who were the underdogs? The priests. Priests were the priests. high, priests. and then the Levites. They were their servants. So the Levites were serving the priests, weren't they? Mm -hmm. So, so they ministered with the holy things. The temple. What temple is that? Old Testament, and uh, the first temple was called what? Tabernacle. The tabernacle, all right. And after they built the temple, who? When did they build the actual temple? The Solomon's day, all right. Is that the first temple of Solomon? It kind of was the first temple of Solomon's temple. Yes, yes. He brought up Solomon. What about the uh, the Israelites? Solomon with Solomon and the Israelites. What was that? Solomon and the Israelites. Uh -huh. I was, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. The Israelites. Solomon was. But to get the Israelites. That's right. It's the Israelite temple. That's yeah, right. but what, what were they, in other words? Were they, were they high, right? The Israelites? Those yeah. are the Jews. Those are the yeah, Jews. I understand yeah. that. But the degrees of priesthood. The degrees right. of the priesthood? Oh, you got the, the priests. Yeah. And then the, above the priests are the high priests. It's one high priest. The priests and yeah. the Levites, yeah. Right, that's, thank you, friends. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Danny. I didn't understand. Okay. That's all right. So, uh, I noticed they, they, the, the, the temple... Uh, they wait on the altar. What altar was that? The one in the temple on the top. Okay, what do you call that altar? How many altars did they have in the tabernacle or temple? A bunch, right? They two. Two inside and two outside. What were the names of these altars? The brazen altar. The brazen altar. What is that? Where was that located? Outside. Outside the tabernacle. And what did they do at the brazen altar? They they. Did they kill the animals right there? Yes, that's why they slew the animals on the brazen altar. What's the other two altars? The altar of incense. Altar of incense. What was, where is that located? That was in the holy place. The holy place. What did they do at the altar of incense? They offered incense. All right, how often? <laughs> how often? Every day, every day. What's the next altar, the third and final altar? Oh, there's the, the main altar in the holy altar. <laughs> What's it called? Mercy seat. Well, mercy seat was on the altar. What happened on that, that altar? Who, who, who described that altar? What did it look like? Two cherubims. Two cherubims. What are cherubims? Angels. What do they look like? 
There are wings. There are wings. That's right. There where are was, wings that was angels. Where were they facing? Each other. Facing each other like this. So the right over the altar. And on the altar, what was on that altar? Um, the, the, mercy seat. the mercy seat. The mercy seat. The, the, the ark. The ark of the covenant. The mercy seat. Uh, what happened on that altar once a year in the Old Testament? They brought the blood in from the slain lamb. How many times did they bring the blood in that altar once a year? Once a year. No. You said, well, how many times did they bring it once a year? Once a year. How many, 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 year? Yeah. How many times did they bring that blood into the altar? Once for the high priest. Once for the high priest and his family and his sins. And then once for the people. Once for the people. So two they had two, two times. Different two, different, no, two different ones. One was a goat, I believe. One was a lamb. So they brought him in and put the blood upon the altar. Now, how many people could go into that altar? Just a high priest. priest. Any time he wanted to? No. no. Uh, what two priests violated that and were slain? Uh, Aaron's oldest sons. Who are they? What's their names? Is uh, that Hathi and Phineas? Or is that the other ones? Uh, that's it, I think. That's right. Strange fire. And we wonder whether they went into the Holy of Holies in the wrong time wrong place. They may not author it on that altar, but on one altar, yes, Tammy? Well, they, the, I don't know if it says it in the scripture, but by tradition, they were talking, well, they had the bells on their, on yes. their robes, so uh -huh. they would hear them moving around in there. Right. So they didn't hear it, they would know that something had happened. Yes. And I guess by tradition, is it? We yeah. believe that they had some rope tied to their, Maybe. To their Maybe. leg or something. Yeah, and Pastor Dan had their names. What were the names, Pastor Dan? Nadab and Abihu. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Nadab and Abihu. They're the ones. They were slain because they didn't. I'm so that's the temple. That's the temple. Hands. Now, do we have the temple anymore for the Christians, believers in the church age? No. We don't have any temple. Do the Jews still have a temple? Do the Jews still have a temple? No, they don't. But but will they have a temple during the millennium? Yes. What's it on? During tribulation, yes. Forgot I had something to say. Oh, it slipped your mind off. It'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, he should. Oh, that's all right. You forgot. Now, uh, so th we don't have any temples. We don't have any part of the Old Testament. How much of the law of Moses is for the believers, the saved people in this age in which we live? How much of the law of Moses is for us? Only what's repeated in the New Testament. And do all people believe that? No. What do some people teach about the Old Testament? Under the law. Under the law, certain yeah. parts of it. For instance, the Messianic Jews, what do they do about the law? Messianic Jews. They still observe it. They still observe parts of it. The feast days, they have all these things. And so some and observe all of it. Some all of it, even sacrifices? Well, that part they keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of it. So we're not under the law. Uh, Christ has redeemed us from the law. Maybe he made a sacrifice for us. Uh, so all these things are true. So at the temple, they waited on the altar. What's is true in verse 13, 1 Corinthians 9, 13, of those that wait upon the altar? What is true in the last part of that verse? Partaker, what does that mean? They, they had they a certain part. Is they had a certain part of the, the offering mm -hmm. given to them to provide for their yes. In other words, God provided for those that worked upon the altar. See, this whole chapter 9, yes, excuse me, fine. My question is, uh, were the ones that died? Pastor Dan had it. No, no, Nadab they, and Abihu. Mm -hmm. Now, when they offered strange fire, were they on the Holy of Holies or were they before that? Well, they offered they were in, supposed they, to be in the well, Holy of Holies. They offered on incense, and that was probably the altar of incense, which is in the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, it's in the Holy Place. It's in the Holy Place. Not in the Holy Place. Altar of Incense? Yes. yes. Okay, Altar of Incense, outside the Holy I, I guess it is. Some verses in Hebrew seem to put it in, but it's really outside. So they were in the Holy Place, yes. They didn't go in the Holy of Holy. Apparently they not. They didn't have the string on their leg. Well, apparently not, but at least they died. Got... Right. Now, in that well, section... I was, I was referring to, in general, yeah. wasn't that, isn't that the tradition that... I wasn't referring to those. They'd have been by, just yeah. in general, the high priest. Yeah, the high yeah, priest. Yeah, that's what the. He, he did have those bells. That's the tradition. Bells. Yeah. So you could hear him moving around. Right. So. Some people believe there's a rope as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I have a question. Yes. You. When the when the temple uh, curtain was was rent, it was torn. Mm -hmm. Which rent? one was that? Then that, that was separates. Divided between the holy place and the holy of holies. Oh, yeah, the one okay. that separated between the two of them. That's right. Uh, 
That's the temple, the, the veil that was ran in twain. Uh, from bottom to top? Top to bottom. Top to bottom. Why is that indicated? Why is that important? Because it's God that did it. Because God did it. Yeah, See, man. if man were doing it, he'd probably go from the bottom, the bottom and come up, up like that. Absolutely. But God did it top to bottom. Now, what does that rent veil signify in the New Testament? Flesh. Bless you. The Lord Jesus died at his, his death. The, the flesh of Christ, the body of Christ, uh, was rent in twain, and he's the veil. His body was rent, and so that veil was rent. So uh, this is the altar veil. Partakers, see, he's talking in chapter 9 of those that work for the Lord to be sustained by the Lord's people. Did Paul make use of that policy? Did he get sustained all of his no. living by the people? No, he lived, he did a tent, he was like a tent maker okay. and all, so he didn't want to necessarily access it, but mm -hmm. I think he was trying to look out for the people that may have not had that second, uh -huh. you know, for sustenance if they uh -huh. served the Lord. So Paul did not follow, but he said that's the way to go. Amen. Why didn't he follow? What was the reason again? What was his purpose not for being brought up? I, I think he didn't want to be a burden. To, I tried, to didn't want to be a burden. I didn't want to stumble anybody. Yes, exactly. sir. Verse, in verse 12, it says, Lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Hinder the gospel of Christ. That's right. Lest we should hinder. So he wanted to do, but he wants to make sure that that's the tradition, that's the methodology. There's nothing wrong with it. The people in a holy temple were partakers of that temple. They got their food, they got their lodging, they, the Lord took care of them. Then in verse 14, even so, why does that mean? Even so. What's the connection mean? Even so what? What's it connected to? Even so. What is it? In spite of this. In spite what? of the fact that they didn't take... Well it, could be, well, it could be in spite of. What else could it mean? Well, just take the word so. What would, what would be so? What's the last thing in verse 13 talk about? The, right, the people that ministered over partakers of the altar. Right. So... Even so, what does that mean? In the same way. In the same way, in the like manner. Okay, even so, in the same manner hath the Lord ordained. What did he ordain you? What does ordain mean, by the way? Different means, but what in this sense? I would say like established. Established, that's good, or established. What did he establish? What was his law in verse 14? Now, what does that mean? They that preach the gospel, who would those be? Pastors, evangelists, missionaries, see, should live of the gospel. What would they mean to live of the gospel? What does that mean? The example. The example, what else? Why oh, they could live the example, what else? They would be provided for through sustenance. Yes, Anthony. To do what the gospel tells you to do. Could be the gospel tells you. But see, in other words, they should live of or from their gospel preaching. In other words, if they're pastors, they're evangelists, they're missionaries, that's the way. So it's not the, it's something we made up. That we take the money, but this is what it was. Uh, so, this is a very important thing. Then uh, in verse 15, but why does he have that adversative conjunction there? That's a what does that preposition indicate? It's in spite of that. In spite of that, what else? Contrast. Contrast. In other words, all that is true. That's the word of the Lord. They that preach the gospel will live the gospel. But on the other hand, yes. even though I have what? Used. None used of these things. things. What does that mean? I have used none of these. What things are you talking about? Power. What is it? He didn't use that power. Didn't use the power to live with the gospel. Uh, in other words, that's completely, totally dependent upon the churches. He didn't use that. Right. He's ten maker and so forth. I have not used uh, that power, that gospel, uh, none of these things. Nothing says, neither have I written these things. Why did he not write these things? What purpose in that verse number 15? He's telling them he doesn't want it. All right. He didn't write these things that it should be so done unto me. In other words, he, he says that that's the principle, but not. Right. He didn't want to. See, a lot of people, if they want to make money, they say, give me all your millions so they would, to do it to them. But Paul writes this, tells how to do it, but it's not for him. He bows out so nobody can criticize. It should be done to me. And then he says, what is his statement here? It's a very strong statement. He'd rather die. He'd rather die than what? Than take the, the things that, that we give him. All right. Because he can glory rather in 
make my glory in what? He was glorying in the profession of the Lord, wasn't he? He'd rather die than say, just make it vain. And you don't have to do a thing, just sit still. And, uh, and so, so it's interesting. Paul had a, uh, that's a very strong statement, isn't it? He'd rather not have any part of it. Let's read verse 16, 17, and 18. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this willing, willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Right, verse 16. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call if you have a question. And uh, you can always do that as well. Barbara, you're on the line. You can do that anytime you wish. So verse 16. Though I preach the gospel. Why did it say though? So what's the next part? I have nothing to glory of. What's that mean? I have nothing to glory of. According to the book, boast. Boast, all right. Nothing to boast about. Though I preach the gospel. In other words, is he forced to preach the gospel? No. 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 Well, but what does it mean? Necessity is laid upon it. What does that mean? All right. What? When the Lord Jesus obligated. is obligated. The Lord commanded him to do that. Necessity is laid upon it. Then what's this, what's this last thing? In verse 13, it says, rather a die. Now here's a woe. What's the woe here? Woe if I preach not the gospel. Yeah, if he doesn't he's he's right. It's going to be a serious situation. Do all ministers of the churches in the world preach the gospel of Christ? <laughs> no. no. Should they? Yes. yes. Do they believe the gospel of Christ? What is involved in the gospel of Christ? First, believing. What? God's plan of salvation. Guess what? what is God's plan of salvation? What's the good news? What did the Lord Jesus Christ do? What's the good news about it? Die for our sins. Die for, Die for the sins. Just the sins of the elect? No. no. Die for the whole world. The sins of the whole world. The whole, whole world. And uh, what do people have to understand before they will receive and believe that gospel? What do they have to understand? They have to have a Savior that they are sinners. Savior. They have to realize they're sinners. They're not sinners. Who needs a Savior, see? They have to realize that Christ is the Savior that died in their place. Yeah. Then what must they do? That they accept them, they believe accept them. And believe. That's Just it. The head, the heart, strong heart belief. And that makes that's really gospel preaching. Mm. Now, the, the modernistic churches, do they believe in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, no. Most of the churches in the whole world. So you have very few or Bible believing churches, they believe the deity of Christ. So many of these churches uh, believe in the virgin birth of Christ. A lot of them deny that. So they believe in it, they deny for the sins of the world. What do some of these modernistic churches believe he died for? For his own self. For his own self and for just as an example, different ones have different views. And uh, we mentioned this morning uh, what uh, Ben Carson believed, just as an example. So not to die for the sins of the world, which is horrible. <laughs> it's on the rack on the right there. But uh, the woe is them if I preach not the gospel. Now, in other words, Paul wanted to be clear in his gospel preaching. And uh, to be a gospel preacher, we've got to preach as the Bible tells us to preach, right? Then in verse uh, 7, we, we read 17, did we? Or not? Did we read 17? Yeah. Before you go on, may I yeah. ask a question, yes, please? Yes, yes. All right, listen, I believe God died for the whole world because that's what the Bible says. And God? Him, God, God, the, Jesus, God? I'm sorry, Jesus died for the whole world. Okay, right? yeah. Now listen, see, God knows the end from the beginning. He knew. He knew he knew many years ago who was going to be with him, who's not. Mm -hmm. I think that's why people say he died for the, for the elect. That's what I. That's what I think. That see, I, I'm not in there. I don't know what they're thinking, but to me that makes sense. That they believe. I know we, we all know God knows the end from the beginning, and I think it, they think that he already knows who's going to be saved or not saved, who's going to be with him, who's not. That's why people say the elect. Is that true? Does that make sense? Well, if they say that yeah. the Lord Jesus dies only for the elect, that doesn't make sense. He dies for the whole world. I understand. You know, See, the I gospel's understand. got to be invited to everybody. Anna, go ahead and answer the question. Well, as someone 
in this room is fond of saying that Christ's um, death was sufficient for all, but efficient for those who believe. And that's right. So you shouldn't say the elect. Well, those, I believe, uh, Eddie, we've yeah. talked many times about it. Yeah. I believe in corporate election. That's just a concept. Just like God corporately, as a body, elected Israel. They're corporate Israel. See, that's what I mean. See, yeah. He elected a corporate body of Christ from all eternity. And that body there, it was elected from all eternity past. And those that trust Christ as their Savior become members of that elect body. That's my understanding of it. That's, the, yeah. right, okay, all right, I got you. But, but see, they use the same concept. Well, that, but the other, the way they concept yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. God just picked certain people to be saved. No, see? Nobody else. And the people, Are you sure that's how they... Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah. just the elect. Oh, yeah. If you're not elect, forget it. You can't believe the gospel. You're not elect. See, this is heresy. It's, it's absolute heresy. Yeah, Bill. All right. When Jesus uh, uh, began his ministry, uh, especially when uh, on Palm Sunday, or what they call Palm Sunday, when he entered uh, Jerusalem, he knew the Jews were going to reject him. Yeah. Uh, but he made that offer to them to bring in the kingdom. They didn't understand his, his visitation. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they had to go through with the act of rejecting him. Uh, but the offer was made anyway. Right. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, what did the Lord Jesus say? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, for ye shall find rest unto your soul. Now when he said that, come unto me, only the elect, did he say that? No. All ye that labor. See, it's a universal. John 3, 16, let's say, I know. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, whosoever, does that include just the elect? No. <laughs> no, whosoever believeth, see. Now, these elect people, these, these hyper Calvinist people, say nobody can believe in Christ except the elect, see. Yeah, Bill. <laughs> when uh, uh, God made uh, hell, that, uh, that uh, eternal fire, he made it for Satan and his angels. That's right. He didn't make it with the intention of casting any people in there. He knew some were going to be cast in mm -hmm. here, but the offer was made for everyone for yes. salvation. Everyone. Openly. All right, so that's in verse number, was it 16 or 17? Please. We did, uh, we did 17 too. Did we do 17 also? All right, now, well, let's, that's the review of that. Uh, Lord unto me that I preach not the gospel, the true gospel. Verse 17, if I do this thing willingly, what would be doing something willingly? You want, to. You, you want to do it. Nobody's pushing you. Nobody's uh, put a gun at your head to do it. <laughs> what is true if he does preach the gospel willingly? What's true in the verse? He gets a reward. Seven. Reward. If it's against his will, the dispensation of the gospel, commit unto me. So in other words, uh, he's, he's got a real problem. He wants to do it willingly, the preaching the gospel. Uh, did we read 18? Uh, yes, we did. We did? Yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, and he asked what is reward? <clears throat> what is his reward? What does his reward in verse 18? To preach the gospel without charge. Without charge. So that's his ministry, preaching without charge. Now, did some churches give offerings to Paul? Yes, on occasion. Philippians, different ones, gave offerings. But he didn't make that as the only way he could, could live. He worked very hard. For his living, uh, when I preach the gospel, make the gospel great without charge. Why did he want to make it without charge in verse 18? So he couldn't say that he was in it for the money. All right, not abuse uh, my power in the gospel. Say that. Uh, are some preachers on the internet? To, uh, do they take any money at all? Yeah, lots. They take lots of money. Do they live in small, little, tiny houses? <laughs> No, so, some, so, bad, uh, bad the, some in matches, yes, Tammy. In verse 17, what do you think it's reward is? I have a reward. Well, I think the verse 18 says, is my reward when I preach the gospel uh, without trying to abuse it. So I think it's sort of connected with the preaching of the gospel, maybe. Maybe uh, next, next verse 18, I think. To be able to do it without, yeah, able to do it without abusing it. That's right. Now, did Paul work 
Just once in a while? No. All the time. All the time. It was it only during the day? We don't know when that is. It says work day and night. Some verses tell us day and night. It's a hard job, tent making. But do we live in tents today? No. Not, not normally, not here, but some people may, but we don't. Do yeah, it over sure. in some other places. Maybe, but. So that's verse 18. Views not the God. Did we read 19 yet? Not yet. Well, let's read 19, 20, and 21. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I may gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. For them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are under the law. All right, 19. Though I be free from all men. What does that mean, free from all men? Not indebted to anyone. Not indebted? He doesn't, he doesn't have the necessary money on people. And he's, he's making his own living. So make his own living. Uh, are those of us who are genuine Christians today free from people? Anybody? Not everybody. But are we free? From, can we say we're free from all men? No. 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 Why not? Some people have jobs. Jobs well, but in what sense does he mean free from all men? Uh, he didn't does, throw any money. Does he have to be bossed by anybody? Uh, yeah, does can I ask that? Does, he, does Paul have to be bossed by anybody? Uh, I don't know about Paul, but uh, it's, a, it's a pyramid. That's how I, everybody's over somebody. You know, the law, yeah, and yeah. it's a pyramid and it runs down because, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I'm trying to get what this word means. Rick had something. Yeah, I, I was thinking about <coughs> When he was free from all men, if he belongs to Jesus, if he right. belongs to the Lord, then even if men are over him and right. think they own him or yeah. try to control him, yeah. he, that's the kind of freedom he's talking about. Right. He is free in Christ, right. even though he's caught up in this. He, there was a system then when he was there, too. Right. He had to work within. If any man be in Christ, he is free indeed. Remember that? Yeah. So in other words, we're free from the law, we're free, we got we're freedom. There's nothing nothing binding us by nothing law, nothing even though there may be people over us as you say, yeah. that's that's good. So it says do I free from all? What did Paul do even though he was free from all? In verse number nineteen. He made himself a servant. Made himself a servant. How does that come? How do how do you get that way? How do you make yourself a servant? He just, he just served them some way. Served them some way, Tam? Considering how your behavior is going to affect someone else. All right. That's why he, he didn't take a, he didn't take money from the churches. All right. And he was a tent maker. What do servants usually do? The will of the master. We don't. The will of the master. Uh, what else do they might do? What type of things might servants be doing? Scrub stuff. Scrub the floors and help people and do things that are helpful. Mm -hmm. huh? Now, how many people is he a servant of? Just a few people around Jerusalem? <laughs> okay, why did he want to be the servant of all? In verse 19. That I might gain the more. What does that mean, to gain? Gain in what way? Gain more money? Mm -hmm. To learn the spiritual gospel. To learn the gospel? What say, Pastor Dan? The spiritual gain. But that I may gain the more. What type of gain? Could be spiritual. Souls. More to be saved? What say, Rick? Souls. More souls. He wanted to win more people to Christ, gain them for the Lord, and that's what he said. Uh, then the New Jersey Transit just walked by, but that's not Paul. He's all right. Just uh, drove by. <laughs> <laughs> drove, drove by. Okay. Do they need now? It now? No, no, no. Because uh, Paul and Elena are going to be taken home by, I think Anthony's going to take them home. Right, Anthony? You'll take them home, right, Anthony? You'll take Paul and Elena home. Who's Ed? Anthony. I'll take them. Yeah, that's what I said. Take them. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have mentioned that the thing walked by or drove by either one. Okay. <laughs> Strike that from the record. All right. Now notice, he says he might gain the more. Now he's got illustrations of two or three verses here, how he's going to gain. For instance, the verse 20, what did he do to the Jews? Was, he wants to teach them so they can come under his wing. All right. Was he a Jew? Yes. yes. But when he was saved, what did he become? Christian. 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 Even though he was born a Jew, that was his race. Oh. Yet in Christ Paul, oh, Paul he became yeah. a Christian, didn't he? Uh, under the Jews, I became as a Jew. What does that mean? 
As a Jew. Jew. As a Jew. What is that? Jew. What, is that? One. what does that mean? As a Jew. Their customs. Just their like customs. he was a real Jew. Their customs. In the beginning, right? Is that your beginning? Yeah. Tell me. When he went back to uh, Jerusalem <laughs> for one of the feasts, um, he, you know, made an oath. He was trying to please the Jews so that, I mean, it's, it's not, I mean. That's true. So. And some of us wonder, why did he do that? Right. <laughs> That's right. So, in other words, does that mean he agreed with all the Jewish customs? No. No. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But he, he tried to, it might appear, he tried to accommodate some of his things to what the Jews accommodated. Yeah, Tammy? But I think that's why he did it. He tried yeah, to come to his brothers and that's his right. brothers to Christ. But then, as soon as that happened, flesh. what did those Jews want to do to Paul? They wanted to kill him. Wanted to kill him. So did it work? Yeah. Did it work? It did not work. Okay. So, so what I mean is, as a Jew, thinking maybe like a Jew thing, but not becoming a Jew. If I, they accused him of that's right. I think it was a false accusation, but that's the accusation. Yes. All right, so yeah, as a Jew, all right, so in other words, try to be somewhat similar so they would be gained for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and then those that are under the law, what do they do to them? What do you mean under the law? What law is that? What law is that? The Old Testament, the Old Testament law, law of Moses. Uh, what do you think, as under the law? That he followed the, under the law rules, right? Well, but, but as, what does the as mean? What's that figure of speech called? Well, we're, we're really not under the law. Anymore. That's right, so what does this as mean? It's a simile. 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 that's right. As or like is a simile. So it's similar to this, but in other words, he doesn't, does that mean he completely puts himself under the law of Moses? No. No, but as, it's similar in some ways. That, that's exactly right. right. But he didn't want to—he didn't want to put himself completely out of law. But as see, these are as these are similes, right. figures of speech. As a Jew doesn't mean he's become a Jew. As under the law doesn't mean he's under the law. But it's as similar. And then uh, verse 21. To them that are without law, who are they people? Who are those people? The Gentiles. Gentiles lost and not anything to do with the Old Testament. Uh, not being without law to God, but under the law to Christ. Now, I became those that are without law, as without law. What does that mean, as without law? The Gentiles were without law. They were the Gentiles. So he tried to win them in, in, without the law. Okay. As they were without the law, so he pretended as he was without the law. He's trying to, to win them more and trying to help as many as he can without being too offensive, yet not putting himself without the law. Do you think Paul wanted to get me without the of any law at all. No, he wasn't a Gentile. Yeah, Tammy. When he was uh, giving his sermon at Mars Hill, he didn't talk about the Jews' law. He talked about their unknown God. Unknown so God. Was, That's was, right. He was talking to them irrelevant to things that they would know and understand. Yes. Not trying to give them. Yes. Under, you know, tra train them about the law. Right. Yes. Uh, Jacob from Texas. Go ahead, Jacob. I'm just going to pass away, everybody. I just want, I just called to say hello and thank you so much for everything. And oh. Good. I just, I just called to say hi. Okay, thank you, Jake. Jacob Grummer from Texas. Wave to Jacob Grummer, his wife, his mother, mother Dale. Uh, Jacob. Dale, okay, that's good. All right, so without law, so what was his purpose to those without law in the last part of verse 20? What's the purpose that he was without law? And verse 21. To gain them that are out of the law. In other words, gain in what sense? Gain more money? Gain them to Christ? What is it? More souls? More souls so they could come to Christ and be saved. And then verse 22 is another thing. To the weak. Who is he talking about? What weak type of people? Read it, read it. Oh, did we read 22? Let's read 22, 23, 24. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker of the with, with you. Knowing not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. All right, verse 22. Who are the weak people here, do you think? They could be non-believers. 
Could be unbelievers. unbelievers. What else could, might they be? Well, they, couldn't they be like crippled and blind? Could be crippled and blind. What else might they uh, be? Could they be like the, uh, backslidden? Could be backslidden Christians. That's right. Like oh, like children. babes, like children. Oh, new could be new Christians. Remember, we talked about. I could not speak to you as as a on a spiritual, but as a carnal, even as a babes in Christ, early part of First Corinthians. But to weak people, uh, what did he do? In verse twenty-two. Well, I'm sorry, Anna. Could this be referring back to the weak brethren in chapter 8? Could be. Yeah. Could be. He wants, wants to save them. He wants to save them. All right, that's true. Could be that. What do you mean, as weak? That's one of them. That's one of them. In other words, does that mean he becomes weak? No. No, no he's already weak. Well, okay, Anna. That's similar again. Well, he, he is able to empathize with them. All right. And under, or sympathize with them. And... What part of speech is as? Simile. Simile. And that means what? Like, like or yeah. similar to. So on. In other words, it doesn't mean he becomes weak. doesn't mean right. he becomes a Jew. doesn't mean he becomes an outlaw. doesn't mean he becomes a See, but as. In other words, try to do something to help them to understand. Not to be racked, to knock them apart, but to do as much as he could to blend in, but not yet make himself weak. Is that That's a good point that Anna made, you know, trying to to chapter 8 says wherefore of meat maketh my brother to offend I will eat flesh while the world uh, no flesh while the world standeth yeah. unless I make my brother to offend so I mean that was his conclusion yeah. so he became weak that's I mean, right. in that sense in that sense he became like the weak so as weak <clears throat> that he might do what <coughs> save them save them win and gain so we can save some now is he going to save all by that no no but not. save save some may now notice, then it said, gain the week. Now, in the last part of verse 22, it says to all men, who are those people? All men, all individuals, not necessarily only males, but males and females, all people. Sure. What does that mean? I made myself available to everybody. But be available, what else? So you can save the bad guys. All right. He wants to be as, as conducive as possible and not going to be agreeing with the world. But by all means, he might save some. He wants to, now, just because he tries to witness to these people and tries to do what he can to make himself as or like these people, does that mean that they're going to accept Christ necessarily? No. no. But that's what he's trying to do what he can. All right. Uh, then 23, verse 23. Uh, this I do. Why? Why does he do all this? For the gospel's gospel sake. sake. Uh, what is the gospel again? First of all, what does gospel mean, that word? Good news. Good news. Evangelium, evangelium, evangelos, good news. And what is the essence of the Bible's gospel? What is the good news? Who's that? Jesus died for our sins. What is, what is bad news connected with the gospel? That they reject them, they, they, they go into That's true, that's bad news. Any other bad news is connected We're with the gospel. Jesus. We're sinners, that bad news, God calls us sinners. What does Romans 3.23 say? For all, all his sins and come short of the glory of God. What? Yes, Paul. Couldn't it also mean that for those that could be an offensive message that if they, if they reject if they reject him, they, 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 get, they go into hell? Yes, that's yeah. also bad news, absolutely. Yes. And uh, uh, the bad news it must be, the so all are sinners, so we have to have the bad news. Now, those that don't believe that they're sinners, do they have any need for a savior, according to their view? <laughs> according to their view, they don't. But do they really have a need for the savior? Yes. Even though they don't think they do. <laughs> Are they right or wrong? They're wrong, They're wrong and think they don't need a savior. No. Eddie and Paul. Eddie and then Paul. Believe it, believe it or not, I know some a couple of really, really honest people and they're and, and they're, they're not believers. And uh they just don't believe, <laughs> and they're really honest. They really are. You know, I know they're sinners. I know they do things, but they don't steal. They don't do this. They don't do that. They they don't do you know. But uh, do they believe God considers them to be sinners? No, they're out. Yeah. Right, that's but like they don't believe in that in the first place. So I know, but that's the first thing they got to believe. Yeah, Paul. Right. Uh, don't they say that? <clears throat> they, they say that the worst is that. Those who they say have no sin, but they make God a liar, that don't, don't have any oh, yes, sin. Oh, yes, that's right. They make God a liar. That's a good verse, Paul, absolutely. <clears throat> so he says, he says, I may gain and save some. Then in verse 23, 
Uh, I do this for the gospel's sake. What does that mean? This I do for the gospel's sake. That's why he becomes all things. He becomes all things to all men, tries to witness to many as he can to say that I might be partaker thereof with you. Partaker thereof. What do thereof refer back to, do you think? In the gospel. In the gospel. In the gospel, I think. With you. You refers back to what group? You. Who that refer back to? Yeah. And he's writing to whom? The Corinthians. 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 Christian believers at Corinth, at Corinth and partakers with you. And then he goes into a race situation. Verse 24. Uh, a race situation. They would run in a race, run all. Now, how many, for instance, how many might run in a, in a big race? A thousand. It's, it's sometimes a thousand. They have this big race. What's it called? Marathon. The marathon. Okay, and a whole bunch of people run it. Boston Marathon, New York, New York, whatever it is, uh, it could be just ten or fifteen or twenty, it could be a hundred, could be a thousand. Yeah, they all run. But what's true in verse twenty-four? Only one wins the race. Only one wins the race. I like that. So, what does Paul suggest that these believers at Corinth do? What does he suggest? Run, run that ye may obtain. Obtain what? The prize. The prize. Now, does that mean that everybody's going to win first place? No. But no. what's the goal? What should be the goal? To win. To the win. goal to win. to win. What is the old saying? If you aim at nothing, you you'll hit it every time. Yes. If you aim at nothing. Now that's perfect. That's, that's success, isn't it? <laughs> In a bad sense. It's unsuccess. That's so, practice, but we, it's strange for me to go <laughs> In fact, what's that? Practice. They have to practice all the time. <clears throat> That's true. Now, what type of race is this? Is this a literal race or a spiritual race? Spiritual, you're talking about? spiritual race. But it's similar to a running race of people. Mm -hmm. So, yes, go right ahead, Barbara. Um, Thank you, Barbara. That's good about the training for those in the Olympic Games. Very good, very good. Lots of training, lots of restrictions. Yeah, Vaughn? Were they dedicated, the winners, the all scouts? Well, well, I think the what she meant was historically. what she, the history, the best chance says in history. I mean now? Well, but she didn't want anything fire, to do with that. Fire, same fire from Olympus. Yes, same from Olympus. Oh, okay. Same fire. So that's good. Well, thank you, Barbara. I appreciate that. So. <laughs> We're on there, and, but spiritually, now, what is so run? What's the subject of that sentence? Who's he talking about? You. You understood. All right, and what? The, who are the yous involved in verse 24? Christian Christians. Christian Christians, by extension, by application? Us. People today, Christian, true Christians today, would so run for the purpose and the goal that we may obtain what? The mastery. What else? The incorruptible. All right. Well, the, in verse 24, it talks about the, the crown, or the rock, whatever crown it is. As Barbara said, it's one crown one way, and one race, another crown another way. So uh, that's the goal. Now, let me ask you this. Just because you seek to run so that we obtain, does that mean we're going to be in that, in the successful in that race of winning? No. Now, everyone that runs, try in, win. you try. There's a goal of believers to please. Then in verse 25, we read, did we read 25 yet? No. No? Well, let's read 25, 26, and 27. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. I therefore so run 
not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Verse 25. Every man, or remember we said before, man meaning human, in other words, men and women, any, every person that striveth for the master. What does striveth mean? Seek. You want to gain Seek. something. Seek. Gain something. Work Works for something. Strive. Master. Mastery. What does mastery mean? To be master of the thing you're trying to win. Try to win. Try to be the, the winner. Temper. What's temper mean? Yeah, take your time. Take your time. Self-control. Self-control. Uh, temperate. In other words, not uh, uh, too hot or too cold. In, in how many things should you be temperate? Oh, all all things. things. And that's what you mentioned. Barbara mentioned that they have training and they have to have lots of things and uh, before they granted these uh, masters, these games. <clears throat> now, uh, in, in verse 25, Paul says that they do it. Who's the they refer back to? The runners. The runners. The runners in the games. The runners are for a race. What do they run for? What's their purpose? What's their goal? <laughs> to win. Yeah, but what? To win? To win what? The prize, but they're going to get the corruptible crime. Okay. They want to obtain a corruptible crime. Uh, corrupt Are you saying something, Barbara? Are you saying something? Okay. Okay. Oh, That's all right. Uh, what does corruptible mean? What does corruptible mean? That it will decay. Decay. It's a decaying. It won't last. It's not permanent. It's temporary, perishable. But the law wreath. That's right. In one case, she had several different uh, crowns, a law wreath many times. Uh, but we, who's the we referred to? Corinthian Christian believers, and by extension, Christians today, to obtain an incorruptible. What is incorruptible? It won't decay. Won't decay. In other words. The, the rewards the Lord Jesus Christ gives to the general true Christians that are running this race is incorruptible, will not pass away. Now, which crown should we look for, corruptible or incorruptible? Incorruptible. incorruptible. See, a lot of people work for corruptible things. I mean, that's one thing to do. You get a raise in pay, or you get a crown and run a race, and get a, get a, uh, one, win the race. But incorruptible is far more superior. Bob, you had something? Well, there's only one winner, right, and one prize? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> I think that anybody who runs and wins is going to get the prize. Well, it says that. one receiveth the prize, and he defines the one. Who is the one that receives the prize? The winner. All right, now, what plural is so run that ye? What is the plurality of the word ye? Well, it's, plural. it's plural, isn't it? Yes. And what's plural? What is the, it, well, the English word we use today? Is what? You. You. Yes. you. Where's the ye? Off here. So, so in other words, <laughs> that ye may obtain. In other words, I, I feel that, do you think the Lord Jesus Christ has only one crown for the whole millions and billions of people in this world? No. I, I think that, well, the point of it is, I, I think you. there's many winners for the Lord. There's only one winner for these people. Excuse me. I look at that when I was reading that where it says we all run. The race we're running is for our salvation. You know, as far as representing Jesus Christ. Well, is it the race in order to obtain salvation? No. No, okay. But it's knowing him and then, but we're all running for that prize of him. But, yes, it's for the we prize. Have him we have him as our savior, but in other words, we're, we're running to, to please him. Is that yes. what you mean? To please him, yes. That's true, Mary. All right, uh, so it seems like that the Lord does not limit the, the prize, incorruptible crown, to just one person. In the running races, that's true. Horse races, that's true. All the races of today, that's true. Just one wins. The rest of them lose. This is a spiritual race. I think it's a different situation. Yes. Everyone that pleases the Lord Jesus Christ runs according to the rules of the game, the rules of Scripture, going to win that incorruptible crown. There could be millions have that crown. And maybe millions that don't have the crown. What's it? To get into heaven. Well, not to get into heaven. It's a reward. Those are people, generally saved people get into heaven without running any race. If, uh, Tammy and then Anna, uh, Vaughn. We all have our own race, right? Amen. That's right. We have our so own we're not, race. We're not technically racing against each other. No, no, we have our own race. We're all running our own race. The Hebrews talks about so that, doesn't it? We don't need to look around at everybody else and, and, and try and compete with them because 
because we're right. you know, we're running the race that the Lord has. Yes, us. Hebrews has something about that, doesn't it? Let's keep your place here in First Corinthians and go to Hebrews chapter twelve, is it? Chapter thirteen. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, read the first two verses or three verses there. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and was set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so this race that is set before us is in Hebrews 12, verse 1. So you see the races, 1 and 2, let us run with patience the race. So every believer, every genuine saved person is running that race, Run that you may obtain. So I believe that the prize can be revealed to accept that everyone who's successfully running the race is set before them. Successful. All right, so run that you may obtain. That's what it says in verse number 26. There's a comment there. Oh, excuse me, fine. I have written down here from uh, Philippians uh, 3 14, I press for the mark mm -hmm. for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's good. That's good. Be precious for the mark, the high calling. I don't understand how there's so many people winning the race. I always thought it was one person. So I gave up running. And Paul, it's, it's not just one. <laughs> this one person that holds millions and millions of genuine Christians through the centuries. Uh, he's got a prize for everyone that meets the standards of the race. Mm. The standards of the race. For everybody now gets a trophy? No, not, not, not if you don't meet the standards. No, got to meet the standards. Thing. Surprise! Just the fact. Say, Rob from Chicago, right here, Rob. Hi, Pastor Wade. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Running the marathon, and I've run 25 of them. Marathon. My goal was never to win the race. My goal was to finish the race, uninjured, unscathed. I had to train a lot. The analogy to that would be to be reading your Bible a lot, but. You want to, just as uh, the Apostle Paul said, it, it finishes course. Yes. And that, that was the goal. I wasn't going to beat the top runners. I wasn't in competition with them, but I was in competition with myself to uh, just sort of push myself as, as, as far as I could go to see how good I was. But um, the, the goal was just to finish a race, not to beat anyone. How many miles was it, Rob? Either 26.2 or 26.4. I can't remember. Very good. Let's wave to Rob. It's Chicago, Illinois. Rob Winograd. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. That's good comment. How, how, how old were you, Rob, when you did that? Call us back. My wife wants to know. Yes, Tammy. Uh, One of your favorite verses. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Amen. Yes. So he had a course, didn't he? He had a course. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so that was verse 25, was it? Did we finish 26? The way incorruptible, our incorruptible crown. That's one of the one of the rewards, isn't it? Our girl, R G I R L. What are the five crowns or in scripture? R crown of righteousness. R G. She's glory. G crown of glory. I incorruptible crown. R, rejoicing, and L, our girl, G I R L. Those are the five crowns. And so this is one of the crowns, this is the incorruptible crown, the reward for running the race. And that means anybody that runs the race satisfactorily, according to the scriptures, not that they have to be handsome or beautiful, not they have to be strong or weak, not they have to be rich or poor, but uh, running, winning the race according to the Word of God, all the prescriptions of scripture. He will or she will receive an incorruptible crown. It's important. It's not simply for one or two. All right. So this uh, incorruptible. Then in verse number 26, I therefore. So who's I referring to there? Paul, Paul himself. Therefore, what does he mean? Why does he put the therefore in there? That's the reason he's running. What is it, Dan? That's the way he runs. <clears throat> yeah. He he wants to uh, strive for the mastery. Therefore, I 
So, front, so referring back to what kind of run is he going to do? Not as uncertainly. So Not as uncertainly. But uh, before that, seeking for the mastery. Seeking for the mastery. That's why. That's so. That way, it's going to run. Physical race or spiritual race? Spiritual, spiritual race. race. Right. But it needs qualifications. It needs exercise, as Rob said. For these, what do you say? Twenty-five marathons you've been in. 26 miles or something, 25 mm -hmm. marathons. 26.2 or 26.4. Yes, 26 yes. And, and 20 different, 25 different marathons. Told, mm -hmm. You're running, following the rules, training, training, training. And what trains a genuine Christian for winning this incorruptible crown? What are some of the things that must go into that training? Reading the, reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. And not only reading, but studying. Studying, not only studying, but praying. Praying, uh, praying but what? Memorizing. Memorizing, what else? What is that? Heating. Heating. That's right. How to heed the Bible, follow the Bible, and so on. Walking in the Lord. So all these things, very difficult things. So running. So not not as uncertainly. What does he put? What does he mean by that? I he run. Means it. Well, he means that. That's right. Not it's uncertain. It's a purpose. All right. Not as not as. All right. Do some people have definite goals, and other people have indefinite goals? Yes. It's possible. So he's not that. It's not indefinite. He's definite. Not uncertain. It's certain. That yeah, Tammy and then Aunt Vaughn. Rob ran in the marathon, but he followed a different course. Yes. He wouldn't, he wouldn't finish it. That's right. Even if he ran more. That's like right. You've got to follow, you gotta follow a course that's laid out. The run that's set before you, as it says in the book of Hebrews. So run. Uh, not as uncertain. So fight I. What does that mean? He's a fighter. Is He's he a, fighting a is, is he boxing? No. Is it spiritual winner, right? or literal fire? Fighting. Spiritual, spiritual, spiritual fight, uh, fighting, it's a battle. Now, do some people not want to fight? Yes. But yes. is this Christianity a warfare? Yes. yes. Scripture says a warfare. Who's the one? Who are the ones that? Who side? Which sides are at war? The devil. The guys are fighting us. The, the world. The world. The devil. The flesh. The flesh. The flesh. What's on the other side? God. God, God himself. God. Father, Son, Holy God. Spirit. God. All Save the Christians. Save Christians. So there's a battle. And uh, we've got to be very sure that we run not uncertainly. And then he said, I fight. Now, some people don't believe in fighting, but what does it say? Fight the good fight of faith. What does that mean? Fight the good fight of faith. Stand. Stand yes. and be victorious and not knuckle under to the enemy. And so there's got to be some stamina, some straight backbone, as they say, in the battle. Are there many battles in the Christian faith today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. A lot of people are fighting and fighting. They've got all kinds of false doctrines, all kinds of different things. What they do is a battle. Are there battles for versions? Yes. They certainly are. All kinds of false versions. They're battling, battling against the King James Bible. Are they battling uh, for music? Yes. Better believe it. I tell you, just for recently, if a, a person that goes to a church, the preacher preaching fine, but the, the music is horrible. Contemporary Christian music, horrible. Uh, battle, all kinds of battles. Is there a battle for dress these days? Yes. yes. There's a battle for dress. Uh, all kinds of battles. We've got to start, stand with the scriptures on these things. Uh, is it always pleasant if you're standing for the scripture? No. 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 A lot of people that differ with you, are they kind sometimes to differ with you? No. Sometimes they're not kind. <laughs> they're very unkind. <laughs> very strong. And they do they call you names sometimes? Yes. They sometimes call you names, absolutely. So now, uh, not as one that beateth the air. What does that mean in verse 26? I fight, just not as one that beateth the air. No purpose. What, no purpose, hot air, just sort of, sort of shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Now, some people do practice shadow boxing. I do just get their, 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 their moves, but that's not the way he does it. Yes, Rick? I was thinking Paul was also in play. <clears throat> Uh, you could be a show off about what you do to beat at the air. Yeah, that you know, is. Very pompous about yeah. that you're so prepared. And yes, that. you could do that. You could be pompous about that. And, uh, uh, it's egotistical to us. But he fights not yep. as well as the In other words, he's got an enemy. He makes contact. Is fighting, as they portray it today in the, in the ring, a contact sport? Yes. It sure is. Mm. And a lot of people lose I'll lose consciousness. Some of them got killed, got all kinds of brain tumors. Is football a contact sport? Yes. It certainly is. And a lot of people are getting more more brain injured and many things. Yep. They change the helmet to everyone, but still, it's a terrible, terrible thing. But here's not the one that beat us there. 
And when you fight for the things of the Lord, you're strong for the Lord's work, is that sort of a contact sport also? Sure. Because people, they fight. See, even though we have words and doctrines and beliefs, that's that's those are things that are solid and true. They're real things. And so people against them, they, they're against your, what you believe in those things. Not as one that beat it here. But then verse 27, what does it mean I keep under my body? What does that mean? Self-control. Self-control. Uh, in other words, what if a, ru a runner doesn't manage his body properly? Is, is it likely to win? No. No, no as, as Rob said, he's got to train. He's beating Was that he beating here, perhaps? Uh, in other words, what are some of the things that runners must do or not to do? Stretch. Well, they got to stretch. What else? Do some weight training. Weight, weight training. What about their eating habits? Oh, they got to eat proper food. Proper food. Low fat diet. Low fat. That, in other words, not a bunch of sugars. They, they can't just gain and gain and gain. A lot of vitamins. I vitamins? used to run, you know. Yeah, yeah vitamins. Got to stretch before and after. Yeah. So, he, proteins. That's right. Proteins and vitamins, all these things. Uh, I keep, yeah, uh, Paul. I, yeah, uh, well, not only did I used to run to school and everything, and I did take a little bit of judo, but I also, I also used, to, used to join, uh, like, the wrestling. Uh-huh. And let's say you wrestled, like, the 126 or 125 weight class. you got to at least be two, maybe three pounds under your, your weight class. Uh-huh. Uh. That's interesting. So you got a certain weight class in order to wrestle on that particular weight class. That's right. So the standards, but I keep under my body. That's right. I submerge. I, I don't. I'm not wild and woolly about my body. I have self-control in my body. What does it mean? Bring it unto subjection. What does that mean? Subjection. Bring it unto subjection. Sometimes you subject your body to a lot more than it can take. Yep. You got to stay within reason. So within reason. You can be in shape for the big game. I put it under subjection. It's like it's under your will and your under control. Life, God's purposes. Being... Who's the I refer to here again? Paul. Paul. And uh, now the question is this, uh, what uh, makes up a genuine Christian's body? What's involved with that body? Man or woman, genuine Christian, not a phony. What is true of that person? You have to have the Holy Spirit in dwelling. Does every Christian have the Holy Spirit in dwelling? Just some yes. people. Every genuine Christian. What else does that genuine Christian have in addition to the Holy Spirit? Spirit's own body. What in addition to the Holy Spirit indwelling that genuine Christian? What else does that person have? The mind. The mind. Anna? The flesh. The flesh. <laughs> so now keep under subjection. I would did not put the flesh in subjection. Yeah. Now, is there a difference between the Holy Spirit of God indwelling a Christian and the flesh? Oh, yes. Now, does the flesh ever disappear from the Christian? No. At death, it disappears, only at death. Are there some churches that teach that you can get absolute holiness and no more flesh yes. of any kind? The holiness people say, flesh will be gone. No longer have that old flesh. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What's the first question? Who do you ask if your person says, I'm perfect? What is it? You ask the spouse or the fiancé or... Ask the spouse, the fiancé or the children. Or the children. <laughs> Maybe the fancy, no, the fancy is fool sometimes, but at least the spouse, ask the, ask the, mom, and dad. the mom and dad, or the children <laughs> that are brought up with the mom and dad, and they will be very clear to say, no, he or she is not perfect. We're going to stop right here at this first. We're going to keep that, we're going to go back to 27, but this time we're going to write chapter, or probably next Sunday, chapter 9, verse 27. But do you have any other comments or questions before we close? Yeah, Vaughn? I'd like us to sing 163. 163, all right. Let's go to 163. The unveiled Christ. Let's say the verse together. Having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus through the veil. Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Number 163. <laughs>
this thing another sander? Take the same old thing. The whole thing? <laughs> Let's just pick another sander. What do you want? Let's do one more. Oh, we're standing number three. All right. <laughs> By the way, when was it that he rent the veil into the Lord Jesus Christ? On the cross, On the cross of Calvary. Oh, Rick, would you close in a word of prayer? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to seek your word and, and see what you're speaking to us so clearly. We pray that you would be with us and bless us as we go about our day and yes. our week. And yeah. may we take mm -hmm. this message a living message into our hearts and spirits for the remainder of this week. Bless us all as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.